the sidelines of Gas Tech 2023, Jane Liao, the Vice President of CPC Taiwan, shared her views on the Leadership Roundtable discussion about hydrogen. Jane, it's great to see you. Thank you for talking to me today. Thank you very much for the invitation. Jane, you work for CPC. Yes. This is the state-owned energy company responsible for exactly. complete domestic supply of energy to right. Taiwan. Um, talk to me about how you're currently positioned, not least along uh, your journey of the energy transition. Well, it's a lot of challenge, to be honest. And because at the same time, we need the security of supply to our domestic market. And at the same time, there's a global trend coming and it's bring us quite a lot of pressure uh, toward the so-called net zero emission by 2050. And that uh, net zero emission by 2050 is also uh, government's policy as well. This morning in Singapore, you headed out on a little field trip. Uh, upon the invitation of Shell, they took you down to a compound at Bukom and you stepped on, on board a liquid hydrogen vessel. Yeah. What did you see? Because surely this will feature in your future in Taiwan. That's the first ever, uh, the first liquid hydrogen vessel. And so it was quite exciting. <laughs> Many people uh, on board the ship and that I, I see that as our future because now we import LNG from overseas. Uh, every year we import 20 million tons LNG from different countries. So when we see the hydrogen as our future toward the net zero emission and then uh, hydrogen to, to be de delivered in the liquid form, it will be our um, future to see because we don't have enough space and we know all the renewable energy, we need enough space to develop. And even though you want to do the carbon capture, you still need enough space. So uh, that's our limits if we are going to promote hydrogen. So I understand that in the industry, there are quite a lot of people uh, marketing the idea or the concept of MCH or ammonia as the so-called hydrogen carrier. But those things, we still need quite a lot of space like a receiving terminal or storage tank that need quite a lot of uh, space that we don't have. Mm -hmm. And that's why we think that the easiest way is just to do the business like what we are doing now, the LNG business model. So I do expect that in the future, liquid hydrogen business model might be similar to the LNG. And that's why when I, when I on board that ship, I was so um, excited too. It's our future, it's right there. You just stepped out of a, a leadership roundtable discussion here at Gas Tech. I believe that at hydrogen, of course, was on the table, but as was uh, technology evolving and uh, new tech uh, applications. Anything surprise you about the discussion? What were the outcomes? Well, to be very honest, I understand that uh, people all the time talking about the hydrogen, in particular the green hydrogen. <laughs> But um, as the LNG importers, we already establish, will establish our infrastructure and the whole nationwide pipeline network. So if we are going to uh, kind of replace by the hydrogen, then we need to set up another set of infrastructure. So I don't think uh, we can only focus on the green hydrogen. Blue hydrogen, it also counts, right? Our target for the net zero emission, uh, there will be a lot of ways. It's not just green hydrogen. So blue hydrogen, and then we can at the same time fully utilize our well-established network. That would be much better. What conversation would you most like to have on the ground here in Singapore whilst you're in town and with whom? I really want to promote the idea. Why don't we just fully utilize our existing uh, natural gas pipeline network and then for the end user to do the carbon capture and maybe utilize the CO2 or storage the CO2. But this is our case in Taiwan because we don't have enough renewable energy for the uh, green hydrogen. So the only thing that we can do is just utilize our existing natural gas pipeline. And another reason is that um, 80% of our LNG imported to the country is for power generation. So for the power generation, once they burn the natural gas, it will be, uh, the concentration will be much better than you capture the carbon 
uh, dioxide from the petrochemical plant or refineries. So it really depends on our respective countries' demand. But in our case, I think that would be much better. But I still get to try to convince our top management to say this is the best way. <laughs> but it's quite debatable, you know. And that's all we have time for, sadly. But thank you for talking to me today and enjoy the rest of GasTech. Thank you. Thank you. If you enjoyed that interview, there's plenty more like it to be found on YouTube and LinkedIn. You can also find full coverage of GasTech 2023 at gastechevent.com. I'll see you again next time. Take care.